If you like my videos, please like, subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions. There's plenty of timestamps, so use them to get to the interesting part of the video. So general play style, you're gonna be moving around, cycling around the mobs, popping your berserk and keeping your molten, molten shell all the time. The clear speed while mapping is just okay. It's not something great, but it's like a doable. This bit is more of like a boss killer rather than a fast mapper. So my plans behind this build that I needed a boss killing machine because I need to start doing my challenges. The main source of damage in our build is the general cry. This is the six dudes that are coming out and they're channeling the blade flurry. Sometimes what's gonna happen, you're just gonna be cycling and you're gonna be moving through the map and you, you won't see your generals because they're gonna be somewhere behind channeling to some random mob. The build is great you, if you have to kill some kind of target that doesn't move too much or is a stationary target. Would I recommend the build? It really depends. If you want to move into doing the end game stuff such as like the higher invitation, doing some challenges with the shaper, definitely this is a great build, it will definitely help you out by a lot. When you're killing a boss your position is very important as well. Press escape, go to the sound tab and change your sound effect volume to as little as possible otherwise your general cry gonna sound very very loud and now you're gonna see a compilation of me killing different bosses so please enjoy the video
This one's uncovered for such a thing in hiding. I simply must see more. Such a dark glow. I cannot look away. Do you remember dying here? This one's uncommon might will make for a fantastic show. Life 
resist my entropy. Take this vitality boom. I'm really not a lot of the special combatants.
selfish. Time to outgrab your mortality tightly. Another challenger? Handle this! Time to up the scrub your mortality tightly. For the bandits, we're choosing to help Alira. For our ascendancy point, we're picking normal, cruel, merciless, eternal. I recommend using a hollowed life flask with the bleeding immunity and a movement flask. And the three other ones are up to your choice. You can use a resistance flask for the less damage, or you can use any combination of like a granite or basalt, or you can mix them up depending on wh whatever you need. For our helmet, I recommend using Abyssus. For your body armor, you're looking up for a chest that has an attack half X amount to critical strike chance. For the amulet, I recommend using Huris with an ointment fatal blade, as the Huris provides us with a lot of dexterity in a very cheap and easy way to get precision. For your boot slot, you're gonna be using a very generic rares with life resistance and an open prefix so we can craft increased movement speed and you cannot be chilled. And please use the new implicit orbs to get some additional resistance. For your gloves, we're gonna be using Arsenal Gentle Touch. Mainly we're using them for the explosion near the corpses, but they're gonna give you some life and int. For your rings, you're just looking for something like life resistant stats and an open prefix is a mandatory as we need to craft. Non channeling skills have minus 7 cost. And on our second ring, we're gonna be crafting channeling skills have minus three costs. If you're struggling with the resistance, you can balance them between those two passives and whatever you can get on your rings. So the Paradoxica is the best in slot weapon that we can get on this build, but it's very expensive. Until you can afford it, I would recommend using a Skaver, as this is a very cheap, unique item that will provide you with a good amount of damage. The Red Blade Banner is a mandatory item as it is our core piece. Thanks to Berserker Warbringer, we're gonna be generating a full rage as long as we are below 25. For our bed slot, we're using Rislata Call because it gives us more damage! Here's the links for our helmet. We're gonna be Determination, Pride, Enlighten, Thread Banner. Here's the gem setup for our body armor. Generals Cry, Pulverize, Blade Flurry, Melee Physical Damage, Brutality, Impale. Here's the gem setup for our gloves. We're gonna be using Caswell Channeling, Cyclone, Desecrate, keep it at level 1, and we're gonna be Infuse Channeling. Here's the gem setup for our boots. We're gonna be using Berserk, Molten Shell, Enhance, Blood Rage. Here's the gem setup for a weapon. We're using Mark on support, Assassin Mark, Lip Slam. Here's the gem setup for our shield. We're using multiple totems, Protector, Blood and Sand. There is no issues on this build with mana. We don't have to use a mana flask. As long as you're gonna have one of your rings, gonna have a channeling skill cost minus three. This will make our cyclone 
cost zero. Another ring, we need to have a non-channeling skills minus seven. And on top of that, we need a replica of Conqueror's that gives us a minus nine. Because you have to have at least 52 mana to cast your Assassin's Mark. At level one, we're gonna be using Ground Slam and use any 200 weapon that you can find. At level 10, you can start using Intimidating Cry. Our next two slams gonna do a double damage. This will help you out greatly while leveling. At level 12, we swap our Ground Slam to Sunder. At level 16, we're gonna be start using Seismic Cry. This will increase our AoE. And at level 28, we have two options. We can stick with the Sunder if you like it, or you can go with the Earthquake. This decision is up to you. Just please do not use call to arms while leveling your build. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.